Good evening and welcome. I'm Kathy Thompson, president of the Red Clay School Board of Education. I'm calling this meeting, this regular meeting of the school board on April 8th to order. It's 7 p.m. This meeting is being held electronically by Zoom, as everyone knows. On March 12th, 2020, our Governor Carney issued a declaration of a state of emergency for the state of Delaware due to a public health threat. The state of emergency allows all public meetings of executive brand bodies, executive brand public bodies, including the Board of Education, to be conducted either electronically or by means of telephone conference call or video conferencing. The information regarding this meeting, including information on how to access the meeting electronically, was published on April 1, 2020 on the Red Clay School District website under public notices. Individuals may participate in this meeting via Zoom conferencing. This is the first time we've held an electronic board meeting using Zoom, so we thank you for your patience as we work through details. As a courtesy to others and to prevent unnecessary disruption, we ask that you please mute your devices unless you have elected and are recognized to speak during public comment. And there are one, two, three, four, five public comments. Individuals who are not members of the board will be muted during the meeting. In order to maximize the effectiveness, the, the effectiveness of this meeting, we will do the following. There will be a roll call vote taking to ensure that each member is accounted for during any action item. During items submitted by the board or board discussion, we ask that we regularly pause and ask if anyone has questions on the board. Please do not speak until this time. Remember that votes require an official roll call, minute approvals, and other motions made before the board. This meeting is being recorded and everything about it will be recorded. During these unprecedented times, we are all learning, and this is our first public Zoom board meeting. This meeting will be run according to board policy, which is found on the Red, Red Clay website. The board is thankful that you have come out tonight, grateful to have you here, and wants to hear from you. Under board policy 2004, the meeting will be run in accordance with Robert's rules. Only one person at a time has the floor, and in fairness to all who want to speak and be heard, we ask that there is no overspeaking. Personally, on behalf of the board, we want to thank all of our Red Clay employees, our administrators, educators, nutrition workers, custodians, bus drivers, secretaries, district and office school staffs, et cetera, for all of the hard work they are doing during this difficult period. I know that many are working double and triple time in difficult circumstances in order to get the job done. Everyone is pulling together to work together and to learn and grow from this experience. We recognize it, commend you for it, and thank you profusely for all you are doing for our students, their families, and our community. As always, Red Clay is leading the way, and we thank you. So the meeting is called to order. Is there, um, is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? I don't hear anything. Is there a motion to uh, among the board? Is there a motion to is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? Hey, Kathy. We need to. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, President Thompson. We need to ensure that all board members' mics are unmuted. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Maria, are you going to do a roll call vote, please? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. 
All right. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Dr. Newton, are you there? She needs to be unmuted. <clears throat> Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Ms. Sabo? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Tony, is Mr. Wilson unmuted? Yes, but he needs to confirm on his end. So when it comes, I'm not sure if he's hitting the button to unmute. Mr. Wilson? Well, do, you want, do you want me to proceed? Yes, I think you should proceed, Maria. Okay, Ms. Thompson? Yes. So it's six, yes, one, not, no response. Motion does carry. Yeah, so we've got our agenda. Thank you all very much. Next order of business is the, ple oh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, you ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, and now it's public comment. So first up is Sarah Fulton. Ms. Fulton, welcome. Oh, and Ms. Fulton and, and all the public comment people, our board rules indicate that everyone gets three minutes to speak. My understanding is that Mr. Clements will unmute you so you can speak for three minutes and at the end of the three minutes, he will mute you. Excellent. I believe that we will get a 30 second warning prior to the end of that. Is that right, Tony? Yes. Yes, so you'll have a 30 second warning prior to the end of the three minutes when you're cut off. So welcome, Ms. Fulton. Thank Let's you, see. thank you. Um, Good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah Fulton. I live here in the Cool Spring neighborhood in Wilmington. I actually live right next door to Lewis Elementary. Um, I am a proud K through 12 public school graduate. I'm the daughter of a teacher. Um, as many of you know, I am running for Red Clay School Board this spring. Um, I'm an advocate and I hope to bring my involvement in my community and the city of Wilmington and the community at large here to this board. Um, but enough about that tonight and I hope we have more time to talk about that later. But today I really just wanted to um, speak and express my gratitude to all of the members of the Red Clay School District who have taken what is seemingly an insurmountable challenge and have turned it into um, as, as good of an opportunity as possible. So thank you to all of our educators, our paraprofessionals and our administrators for working around the clock to figure out how to do remote learning. And, and I know that our students and our, our parents and the whole community are really grateful for all of the work that they have put in. Moreover, I want to thank the school nurses and the nutrition staff, the secretaries and all of the administration, uh, the, the custodial staff and really all essential staff that are working around the clock to make sure that Red Clay schools are kept safe at this time um, and that everyone can have a meaningful education experience 
given the circumstances. So I just wanted to really express my gratitude um, and to lend an ear tonight to see if there's anything that I can do um, in this time to, to help make our school district stronger during, during these times. But I hope that I get the chance to meet all of you in person over the coming months. And I hope that I can earn your vote on June 16th. But that's all I have for you. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Ms. Fulton. Next up is Mr. Stephen Fackenthal. Welcome, Steve. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Stephen Fackenthal, music teacher at Ritchie Elementary and political action chair for the Red Clay Education Association. I'm here to speak tonight on behalf of our educators regarding our new life that is now remote learning and the communication concerns our educators have been in been experiencing through this process. Let it be known that we all recognize the unprecedented circumstances we are currently experiencing, and we are all committed to doing our very best for our students and families. Our educators are learning new platforms, conducting a multitude of Zoom meetings, and developing and delivering remote specialized instruction, as well as anything else possible to meet the needs of our learners. We recognize there are some elements outside of our control, but there is also plenty we can control. During this period, it is easy to compare what some districts, schools, and individual teachers are doing or being asked to do versus others. This leads to anxiety, rumors, and frustration in our red clay community at a time when there is too much of that already. Clear, concise communication is important at all times, but it is particularly vital during times of uncertainty, as, as is now overburdening a group of educators that are already working tirelessly. Some examples of mis miscommunication across buildings have included varying expectations of educators and how they should be helping their students with special needs, amount of contacts educators should be attempting with students, teaching of new material versus, versus not teaching of new material, uh, when marking period three ends and when and what work can and cannot be included. Our CEA has been holding weekly conversation with district leadership around these and other issues for the past month, as recently as this afternoon. We appreciate these conversations and are hopeful a more productive course of action going forward may, can include any and all communication that should apply to all teachers, teachers come directly from one source. If information must be disseminated, it should come with the explicit requirement that it, that it be in its in original form and in its totality. Uh, example, dose. Future remote learning resource packets include complete answer keys and solutions in order to best support our families and to not require hundreds of, hundreds of educators to duplicate this work individually or as grade level teams. And finally, information be provided to parents regarding, regarding report cards and marking period three. As we continue in this remote learning time, I'm hopeful we can continue working, working, working together to strengthen these areas, to truly respect the work of our educators and to best inform and support our families for the better, betterment of our students. Thank you very much, board. Thank you, Mr. Fackenthal. Ms. Grace Otley, welcome, Grace. Can you hear me now? Thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself to everybody. Or I'm a familiar face because I'm actually a former Red Clay uh, district student. I went to Pat Calloway. I also went to Charter. And my mom was a teacher for a long time in the, with the Red Clay School District. So I'm just very excited to get to introduce myself to you and run this year for District G. Uh, given that, I think it'd be a great experience to bridge my experience as a former Red Clay teacher and a current college student and try to bring any diversity and uh, you know, I have to the board. I'm very grateful to be able to hopefully draw that parallel that the governor has set the president of appointing a new youth membership uh, leader to the State Board of Education. So I'm excited to meet everyone, hopefully one day, not virtually. And I'm also excited to see you on tonight's meeting to the things that are going on with the right place for the district because I also am very grateful for everything you're doing. I can attest as a student that things are being great. Things are absolutely right now with having to convert technology uh, to this. So thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much, Grace. Next up is Mr. Martin Wilson. Martin? Oh. 
Unfortunately, Mr. Wilson is not in the room. He says his system is still buffering. Oh, so he's got a problem. He maybe needs to shut his computer down and restart. Yes. Okay. So. Lastly um, is Catherine Thompson. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> okay. Well, hi, everyone. As you know, my name is Kathy Thompson, and I'm seeking re-election to the Red Clay School Board, of which I've been a member for the past 10 years. Most of you know me well, having seen me for 10 years. I hope you know that I love Red Clay, and I have a proven commitment to Red Clay, as well as a very strong and hard work, work ethic on behalf of Red Clay. I've lived in Red Clay for over 30 years. I've worked in Red Clay as an attorney for the DuPont Company for almost 40 years. My children attended and were graduated from Red Clay schools. My daughter works at Warner Elementary as a teacher in a job she adores with students and faculty that she also loves and respects. I am committed to Red Clay. During my time on the board, I've worked really hard and been intimately involved with virtually all aspects of the district. I've been a member of and I'm a member of the Community Financial Review Committee because our finances matter greatly to everyone, including me. I'm a member of the Board Policy Committee because as a board member, we set policy and the direction of the district, so I view that as key. I'm a member of the Code of Conduct Committee because having consistent um, consequences for acts for all of our students is important. I'm a member of the Dropout Prevention Committee because graduating from high school is key and all of our students should graduate. Recently, I joined the Wellness Committee because the health and welfare of the students and staff is paramount and leads to well-being, growth, and a readiness to learn. I am on the, I am a member of the Red Clay Education Foundation, a nonprofit that supports additional programming for our students that our budgets can't otherwise support. I am the Red Clay representative to the Delaware School Board Association as a board of director and previously as a legislative committee chair. It's important so that we know what's going on statewide and we have a voice and that voice is heard statewide. In addition, I have attended hundreds of board meetings, such as the Diversity Committee. I'm involved, I was involved in WIAC. I am involved in the Reading Commission. I've been involved with the strategic plan, the supervisor, the superintendent search, and the list just goes on. I find the need to continually learn about school issues, and I've attended national school board meetings for many years now, so that on a national level, we know what the current issues are, and we get to interact with our fellow school board members. Red Clay is likely the most complex and diverse district in the state of Delaware. As a member of the Red Clay, I've been involved intimately. I have a proven commitment and I've been intimately involved. I think Red Clay continues to need that intimate uh, connection and hard work. And I'd like to continue for the next five years. I hope you will vote Kathy Thompson for Red Clay. I was fortunate enough to receive the endorsement of the Red Clay Education Association, and I am very thankful for that. So thank you very much. Okay. So next we go on to the minutes from our February board meeting, which seems a long time ago. The first up are the minutes from the February 12th, 2020 executive session. And um, may I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Is there second. a second? Second. Roll call vote, I think, Maria. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Ms. Sabo? Are you there, Ms. Sabo? Yes. Um, Mr. I Wilson? Also, sorry, go ahead. not to interrupt the vote, but I need to go on mute and stay on mute for a while. So I don't, won't be able to vote for the next couple of things. Thanks, Ashley, for letting us know. Okay. Chime in when you're available again, okay? Um, Mr. Wilson is still buffering. Ms. Thompson? Yes. So it's six yes, 
One unavailable. Motion does carry. Great. And now may I have a motion to accept the minutes from the February 12th, 2020 regular session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Tom? Yes. So five yes, two unavailable, motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, and now we've shifted things around just a little bit. So next up is our superintendent with his report. So Mr. Green. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you to, again, our board members, um, all of our guests, staff members who are joining us this evening uh, for our Zoom uh, board meeting. Uh, as Ms. Thompson indicated, uh, you know, this has definitely been a trying month for all, but before I begin, I want to take the time to acknowledge all of our healthcare mm -hmm. professionals, um, all of those who are working uh, in our grocery stores and within our community um, and serving us, our first responders, um, those who are truly on the front line. And as you see on the cover of my report, um, our school transportation drivers, school nutrition drivers, uh, school nutrition workers, excuse me, and our custodial staff are no different. Um, in their efforts, they've been relentless since day one of closure and really standing up our mill distribution sites, uh, keeping our schools clean and sanitized. Um, and then more importantly, our educators who um, truly under these unprecedented times are uh, revolutionizing what we have to do um, in education. Uh, no fault of no one's own, um, but I think the collective will and, and the response to our community, as indicated, being the largest school district, not only in the state, but being the most diverse in terms of needs, supports, and programs, uh, to do what we've been able to do in such a short period of time um, truly takes a team effort. I want to acknowledge our leadership team here at district office and the support staff uh, who have been working tirelessly 15 to 18 hour days um, to really provide the necessary supports. Uh, notwithstanding our challenges, I think in doing large part, we all need to be extremely proud of the efforts uh, that we've displayed thus far in responding to our community needs. We can go to the next slide. And so just a timeline of events, um, you know, prior to the March 13th school closure, you know, we were in a, a state of um, low risk as a state, no confirmed cases within Delaware. And as we were seeing things happen in neighboring states, um, Maryland being one of the states, actually the first state to close schools. And that since started uh, creating communications in terms of parents inquiring when we as a district were gonna start closing schools, inquiring if we could close schools. At that time, uh, the government issued uh, the first state of emergency declaration, which left schools and businesses open. On March 11th, we issued our first communication as a district um, with regards to our Red Clay Pandemic Preparedness Action Plan. That communication went out at 3.30 on that Wednesday by 3.45. It was deemed invalid because the state had initi uh, initiated or disclosed its first confirmed case. Uh, prior to that, we had um, had some notice from DIAA uh, because the Conrad girls basketball team was in the playoffs. And unfortunately, the University of Delaware had um, basically notified the state that they were not going to host uh, playoff games. We were in turn asked to host a playoff game. Uh, Conrad was also encouraged by the state to pre-sell uh, basketball tickets in which they did an amazing job of literally selling 300 tickets in 30 minutes. And shortly thereafter, we received a notice from the Department of Education and DIAA to say we would want them or they wanted us to hold off on this pre-sale of tickets in essence to wait until they had a coronavirus or COVID-19 meeting. And that following Thursday, they delayed the game to a Friday or Saturday, but then subsequently uh, postponed those playoff games. And then on the evening of March 13th, the governor had announced a initial two week closure uh, from March 16th through the 27th uh, to give us, in essence, time to uh, clean and sanitize schools, 
and also to make sure that we were positioning ourselves and becoming prepared for where we currently find ourselves uh, present day. Um, at that point, on the 13th, there were additional four confirmed cases uh, in the state. They were all clustered at the University of Delaware. We were still deemed low risk. As a cabinet, we met Saturday the 14th to really look at how we were going to set up meal distribution planning because that was our first primary goal uh, for that following week. I'm happy to say we did stand up four sites on the initial day, uh, that being Baltz, Richardson Park, uh, Stanton Middle School and Warner Elementary. And then we expanded to what we currently have our 20 sites across the district. Uh, just to let folks know how far we've evolved. Um, yesterday, we served 3,700 students um, throughout our district at our various meal distribution sites. We've steadily uh, watched those numbers increase. And as we monitor that, it, it demonstrates the ongoing need within our community. Um, and what you'll see later on in the report, the total number of meals um, that have been um, dispersed throughout our community thus far. Uh, fast forward to uh, March 22nd, uh, the governor on a Sunday evening, um, you know, unbeknownst to many across the state, it was we found out at the same time as the community that schools uh, would now be closed through uh, May 15th. Um, and then on the 23rd, we <clears throat> began our process to look at uh, the structure and finalizing our remote learning framework was, was kicked off last week. Um, we started that again the week of March 30th. Uh, we printed and distributed materials um, and really didn't recognize that broad level of need again across our community as it related to printed material. Um, we have over 8,000 uh, or so devices um, deployed in terms of Chromebooks. We are continuing to respond to those needs for who uh, families and or households that have uh, barriers as it relates to technology. Um, I saw Boss Elementary again responding today. On April 1st, we noticed our modification of spring break. Uh, we were requested to submit a plan in terms of remote, remote learning framework plan to the Department of Education on April 3rd. That plan required us to uh, ensure 188 day teacher work calendar along with the uh, student requirement for hours, which is 1060, 1060 hours for students in grades K to 11, and then for seniors in grade, uh, seniors, excuse me, 1032 hours. So understanding that we're still in the stay home provisional order, um, it made logical sense for us to modify our spring break to get four days back, um, which would limit the number of days because the state has yet to determine whether or not the two weeks between the 16th and 27 will be time forgiven. Uh, so we had to process our uh, framework and our remote learning plan, ensuring that we met Title 14 requirements for 188 day a teacher work calendar for 10 month employees. We submitted that plan uh, on Friday, April 3rd. And now we find ourselves here at our regular uh, scheduled board meeting uh, via Zoom. We can go to the next slide. And so again, really looking at the number of meals. This is just a visual and, and showing, you know, our meal distribution sites and our feeding sites and just really um, coalescing and making sure that we also distribute um, our printed materials. And we also have to be reminded that we're dealing with a health crisis. And so uh, we're thankful. I'm thankful to the number of folks who have reached out, who want to volunteer, who want to support. Um, but we are, you know, social distancing and limiting the, the, the spread. Uh, we've seen the numbers increase to from uh, one on Wednesday, March 11th, to over 1,000 cases present day. I believe right now we have 1,116 or so, approximately 16 cases with 19 deaths across the state in this period of time um, that we've been closed. And so as much as we want folks to come out and support, we also need to be mindful um, of what's required in terms of social distancing, um, minimizing the spread, and keeping our community safe. This is not a inclement weather response. It's not a natural disaster response. It's one that you know we have to be conscious and first and foremost in ensuring the safety of all of the members within our community. And as the CDC recommendations have continued to change over time, so has our response. So when we talk about communication, unfortunately, we're not always on the front end of that communication, which ultimately puts us in a reactionary position um, to respond to the needs of our community. You can go to the next slide. 
And so to date, as of uh, last week, and not counting yesterday, we served over 67,000 meals to 11,000 children in six days throughout our district. And again, I think that's demonstrating a need. Our custodial staffs have been um, busy cleaning and disinfecting our buildings. Um, you know, they've also been able to get punch list things um, done, but ensuring that when we do anticipate a May 18th return, um, if we are to return, again, there's no confirmation of that as of this time, that our buildings are ready, sanitized and clean in preparation for everyone to come back. Next slide. Our school nurses have been active and, and supportive uh, across the district, helping with health screening, helping with safety tips, ensuring that our school nutrition staff, our custodial staff, and in turn, our transportation staff, as they are out and about in the community, are adhering to uh, the CDC Department of Health guidelines as it relates again to social distancing, keeping themselves safe with masks and gloves. Um, so thank you to our nursing staff who've been diligent in not only supporting the district, but also working uh, to support needs throughout the community, uh, whether that's the Delaware Emergency Management Association, DEMA, really looking for support um, and really helping with uh, hotline calls. Um, so our nurses, again, have been um, on the front lines and really supportive uh, throughout the district. So we, we appreciate and applaud their efforts as well. Next slide. And a true need, just again, we have seen students as it relates to a protective, a personal protective equipment and the need. And as we listen to the news and hear uh, where there are limitations, we've seen our community step up where students have answered the call, but more importantly, our schools have answered the call and really looking at where we have extra supplies within the district to be able to donate uh, to our healthcare professionals, frontline staff who are truly putting themselves at risk. We have also had some preliminary conversations as the Western YMCA has stood up um, daycare sites for critical need for staff, for law enforcement, um, fire, ambulance, and also again, nursing and healthcare professionals um, to potentially in the future may have to support that as a district. So we're being cognizant of what the needs are in the community as it relates to our healthcare workers and those who again, who are on the front lines helping respond uh, to this pandemic. And then to our educators, again, um, being an educator myself, my wife is a high school teacher. We had three children in our home and really seeing the ways in which our educators have really stepped up and, and answered the call um, and how they found new ways to teach from home. Uh, again, turning, we've seen examples of folks turning tables into whiteboards, um, the creativity around um, you know, Google lessons, Google Docs, uh, adjustments to Zoom meetings, and the time and energy and effort to really show the, the, the true nature of a teacher's heart. And I truly can't thank our educators enough. Um, but we also want to be mindful, again, as we respond to the needs of our students and our families, um, to take care of yourselves in the midst of this, as you care for loved ones, um, as you know, we have gotten, I would say, past a fear stage and continue to see anxiety um, as it relates. So we are mindful, and as Mr. Fackenthal had indicated, that you know we kept open lines with our uh, teachers, with our buildings, to ensure that you know we are tuned um, to what those needs are, and and really not wanting to put a lot of pressure on our teachers, but we also know, again, the teacher's heart and to, to be disconnected. You know, we are in a human business. We're in a relationship. And when that connection is gone because of schools closing, you know, there, there is that sense of loss. You know, I long for today to see our buses back on the road, to see students walk in the hallways, to hear vibrant classrooms. Um, that, that void is something that you can't replace in our best efforts to go to remote and digital learning. Um, you know, we, we definitely long for those times where school was back in session. So again, thank you to all of our educators who are spending, again, countless amounts of, of hours and time to get creative and use the resources that are provided uh, to keep that school at home connection, um, which is where our focus should be. Next slide. Again, we have our school staff, our ID department, who have been really working around the clock to meet the needs of uh, the tech demand that we have. Um, whether that's really helping direct to broadband access, to Wi-Fi access points, um, helping families who, you know, computers or Chromebooks may be experiencing tech issues, 
Um, so they've been very supportive in working with our building, our building principals and individual families to address that need. Again, to support that learning at home. So thank you to our tech department. And then if you haven't had the opportunity to go to literally in a matter of a week. So thank you to our communications department for standing up a, a new website um, that helps with updates, you know, re remote learning tips, online resources, information on our meal distribution programming, and also safety tips. That site continues to evolve as we continue to grow in our learning and in our processes with remote learning. Again, we're not without our, you know, our hiccups or our hurdles and obstacles, but we, we see them as just that. Um, things to overcome and not things to um, put us in a position to where we feel defeated because it's very easy to, again, to look at what a neighboring district might be doing, a neighboring state might be doing. You know, our approach has really been um, one of care, compassion, and empathy, whether that was be for our employees, but also our families and, and our educators understanding that these are truly unprecedented times. Uh, and go to the next slide. And these are just some communication and engagement metrics. Um, we, we are trying to use that as best we can to inform our decision making. Again, whether that would be us comparing the numbers um, between Tuesday and Thursday, understanding that we had 3,070 uh, yesterday for meal distribution sites. That's also the time where we're distributing our printed material. And so we're using leading indicator uh, data to help inform our decision making. And this slide just shows um, the number of views per our pages from March 11th to April 7th, which is a 973% increase. The number of people reached has been a 508% increase. And then post engagement, really looking at a 950% increase. And then videos and things that we posted online, looking at a 375% increase. So just as we're taking insights and information from epidemiologists and really looking at the health crisis, we're also monitoring data within our district um, through our communication channels to figure out the best way to continue to evolve as it relates to communicating and reaching the broader community in our response to our students and our families. And so our path forward, again, there, there are many questions that, that are out there um, that unfortunately can't be answered in this presentation, but our, we will continue our approach to ensure deliberate and facts-based response to our community needs. And then our guiding principles, understanding that, you know, we want to keep it simple, simple, simple. You know, the, the second that we think we have uh, credible information, it's changed numerous times. One example would be guidance that indicated that uh, individuals who were at high risk population, those who were 60 years or plus should stay home. Uh, I think we're currently on a 10th or 11th modification of the state of emergency declaration. Uh, so that information changes if not by the day, sometimes by the hour. And so we're forced to respond to that. And so you never want to, we never want to get ahead of ourselves. So it's the old adage, you, you measure twice, measure three times and cut once. And so we are in a, a instant information age um, and where folks want information um, right now, but we're monitoring it through facts as we disseminate and we respond. And we're also looking to, again, to continue to define those clear roles for our, for our leaders, for our team for our support staff and ultimately in support of our families. Um, this is a huge undertaking. I know a lot of families are, you know, put in harm's way as it relates to whether that would be losing their jobs. Uh, we see unemployment rates continuing to rise. Um, you know, for those who own and operate small to medium sized businesses, which are, is a large percentage of our children and families, you know, so us being cognizant again, that this isn't an inclement weather, school this isn't school closure based on a natural disaster um, this this is a, a true once in a lifetime experience that we're all experiencing so we have to get through a collective and those roles continue to change as the situation continues to change so we're going to continue to work on enhancing our remote learning materials resources and supports we'll continue to work on and, and improve our communication our connections to schools and our staff and more importantly our care as we manage and lead the district through this crisis. And so again, I just wanna end and conclude by saying truly thank you to everyone as we continue to turn this page um, and move into the next phase of our response. I know there are lots of questions around um, our third marking period. We will issue some communication 
um, the questions around um, new learning, old learning, reteaching, you know, we, we will support and we are supportive of introducing new materials, but we want to be consistent and really ensuring that we have equity and equitable access across our district. Again, knowing that we have such a diverse student population, you know, 16% of our student population are English learners. Um, when we look at our high school, our secondary level, a lot of our students are parentified. Um, so that idea of engagement and connection is something that we're um, truly trying to work on to make sure that they still feel connected and, and a part of a school, a culture and climate. You know, so we're continuing to work on that. But again, I just wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank my leadership team, thank our families, thank everyone who took the time out this evening to join us. And again, know that collectively, uh, we will get through this together um, because we are truly a, a positive, successful, um, compassionate, caring and empathetic school district. So. Thank everybody for their time. And that concludes uh, my superintendent's report for this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from the board? So uh, I hear none. I just had a question for you, uh, Darrell. I know you're talking about enhancing the learning materials. So could you give us an idea of what you might be thinking of or what we're thinking about doing? I know it's not set in stone at this point. Well, and so it's, it's, this is a collective effort as we get feedback from our educators. <laughs> an example would be um, you know, providing answer keys to some of the assignments that are given, some of the information that's given. Again, this is an evolving process. When schools close abruptly on a Friday evening and you're really only able to open the buildings to have staff and students retrieve uh, medical necessities or, or um, you know, resources, or more importantly, um, you know, you learn abruptly that we were closed for two weeks and then that gets extended through May 15th. Remote learning isn't like traditional learning. And I think that's one of the things when we can talk about having what we call flipped classrooms, it's so much more than a device. The average rate of engagement as it relates to online learning for a given task is anywhere between two to two and a half minutes. Uh, it's very different than that would look in a traditional classroom. And so as we continue to look at how we're responding, it's what we're responding with. And again, using some of that insight as our educators are on the front line, helping inform the work that we're doing, um, how we can collaboratively continue to work together. So again, not knowing how long uh, we will be right now, we're planning again for a May 18th return, um, but we'll continue to work collaboratively with our educators. Um, you know, those who are working within with our special needs students and families um, as it relates to vendors providing, you know, teletherapy. A lot of that, again, what would work in a traditional uh, school environment um, is something that we, we're continuing to manage on the fly um, as we respond to the needs within our community. And, and Darrell, there were, as, as you know, because we've been communicating a little bit today, there's a lot of questions in the community regarding the packets and the timing of the packets and the distribution of the packets. Will you be looking into that as well? As I indicated, we're looking at every aspect of what we're doing and our initial phase. And again, to stand up what we've stood up in a matter of a week's period of time. Um, we're not gonna let perfect become the enemy um, of greatness. And so these are learning curves and learning obstacles. I mean, I think, and this is something that, that the nation is trying to figure out. So this isn't just isolated. Uh, to red clay it's just not isolated to our neighboring school districts i have the fortune of serving or sitting on a national forum um, with you know superintendents chief state officers from you know from washington state to washington dc and everyone's grappling with the same issues on a varying degrees um, but we are providing um, you know attention to support and if families have those individual needs again we're encouraging them to reach out to their building level principals and to the teachers um, so that we can continue to work with them to meet that need um, as they get made aware to us. And I do think on behalf of the board, everybody recognizes all the work that the whole staff is doing. So thank <clears throat> you very much. I do know we are all learning from this. Kathy, can I say a comment? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to commend um, Mr. Green and, and all the faculty and staff for putting together what they have for 16,000 students, I think quite 
Um, honestly, it's been nothing short of amazing. Um, you know, I've got a junior at home and he's been online with his teachers and I think they've done an amazing job. Um, he's also has had contact with the ED and I can't say enough about that. I think he's at Conrad, Mr. Pruitt and his faculty have done an outstanding job. Just the videos that I've seen from the other schools, I think the faculty has done, um, has gone above and beyond in Wright Clay. I have teachers up and down the state through my, through working at DSU and Wright Clay seems to have had very few problems compared to some of the other districts in the state. So I want to commend our faculty and our staff and for all the work that's gone on behind the scenes, because quite frankly, I thought it has gone very, very smoothly considering what we've had to do, what the teachers and the faculty and the staff have had to do at both the district office, because this is a once in a lifetime pandemic. Hopefully we won't ever have to see this again. Um, and I think people have done an amazing job under a very, very stressful situation. Agreed, so thanks, Faith. Any other board member have anything to say at this point? Well, Kathy? Yes, hi, Martin, you're back. I'm, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry about that. You're not uh, buffering anymore. I'm telling you, <laughs> what, what an evening. Uh, I'm pretty much, is this a good time to say mine or should I wait till uh, uh, things brought up by the board? I don't want to mess up anything here because well, I had time getting on here. I hear you. And if it's if it's the pleasure of the board, we would do it during, since you're a sitting board member Martin, under board policy 2011, you can only do that during public comment. And if right, it's right. of the board, I'm happy to go back to public comment because I know it was not your, uh, it wasn't your fault that you were unable to be here at that point. Is there a motion to allow Martin to give his public comment since he was signed up for it and unable to attend due to a technology issue? So moved. Is there a second? Faith, you're on mute. If you're talking, you're on mute. I second it. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? I guess we need to do a roll call, Maria. Okay. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Six yes, one unavailable, motion carries. Okay, so we have to ask Mr. Clemens if he can get the clock up so that you can start your three minutes, Martin. I got it, Kathy. Oh, you got it, Maria, thank you. Yes. So you're on, Martin. All right, I'll take less than three minutes. Um, yep. Like again, I said I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, of course, um, I am Martin Wilson. For, first, I would like to thank Superintendent Green and the entire Red Clay staff, every department for the outstanding work and effort that has been taken during COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank the parents and guardians who have worked diligently with the students and staff to transition to our remote learning environment. I would like to continue to advocate for all students, faculty, and staff as the District B representative of the Red Clay School Board. I am asking for your continued support and vote for re-election on June 16, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Okay, and so then we'll, you're done, we'll move on. To the oh, Kathy, I just want you to know, I just wanted to announce to everyone, Ashley is back on, Ashley Sabo. Oh, wonderful. Great. Ashley's back on. We're, we're moving on to um, action items. So the first one is the donation from the Willis Group. It's the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the donation to Stanton Middle School as submitted. And when I looked at this, I didn't exactly know what it, it sounds like it's a check for $500. So is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. 
Any discussion? Thank you. Thank you is but, right. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Roll call vote, please, Maria. Okay. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Yeah, and thank you very much to the Willis Group. That's an outstanding contribution. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And the next action item is the 2020-2021 the school calendar. It's the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the school year calendar for the 2020-2021 school year as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Sorry. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. So I think we need a roll call vote again, Maria, please. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Seven yes, unanimously carries. Motion carries. Wonderful, thank you. Now we move on to the action items and the, con the consent items. Is there a motion to accept the consent items as presented? So move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote then, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Mr. Ms. Sabo? Ms. Sabo? Ms. Sabo, are you there? Ms. Sabo? Tony, can you check to see if you muted? She is, but she's not unmuted. I, I think she needs to acknowledge that she wants to be unmuted. Okay. Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. That was a yes, Maria. Okay. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Thank you. Now we move on to items submitted by the board. So could I know which board members have items to submit and we'll take, we'll, we'll go one by one? I have a few. Jason does, anybody else? Hi, Kathy, I, I have an item as well. Jose does, did you say you did it, Adriana? Yes. Okay, anybody else? We have, I, I, I have some too. So we have Jason, Jose, Adriana, and Kathy. Anybody else? No? Okay. So you want to just go in that order? So Jason, do you want to go first? Mr. Casper? Sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, I, I uh, just wanted to kind of reiterate what uh, Superintendent Green said. Um, on Wednesday, March the 18th, I had the privilege to safely uh, witnessed firsthand some of the meal distribution. I visited Warner, Bolts, Richardson Park, and Stanton. Uh, Richardson Park, when I got there, they were on the third. They'd run out of food at least two or three times. So, you know, folks from food service and, and transportation were running food back and forth. It was just, it was amazing to see uh, with just a couple days of preparation how, how well the, the staff put us all together. Um, a special thanks to Jessica Terranova, uh, Kelly in transportation, and Martian in facilities. Everybody's just, everybody's stepping up to what they need to do. Um, after the 18th, of course, I had to start to report to work remotely myself. Uh, and then I also wanted to, well, I think it was Sunday morning, I had to get in touch with Ted Ammon. My, my email went on the fritz, so Ted was the saving grace so I could get emails to be able to participate in this, uh, in the meetings that we've had. 
And on a personal note, um, I have a little boy that lives next door. He's a student at, at Ritchie. And I mean, all the teachers and the staff, administrators, bus drivers, custodians, secretarial, everybody, the entire district uh, has just been doing a wonderful job. And, and the IT guys, uh, the IT staff that, that helped us put this together, it's been uh, amazing. And, and again, back to my, my, uh, the young man who lives next door, I've got to witness some of his online learning because you know, I, I talk to the kid every day. He's a great little boy. Uh, but Steve Fackenthal has been on just about every Zoom that, little, that young man has had. Um, Sherry Brooks, Greg Johnson, Stephanie Armstrong, all the staff over at Ritchie, they've just been phenomenal. Uh, and it, it's just been an honor to see what they've been doing um, in, in what is very, very new to all of us. And I'm going through it myself in my own job. So this is this is a, a work in progress. But um, I don't think I missed anybody. But any everybody that's involved in Red Clay from yes. from the board as well down down to you know the the person that was just hired in, in the last couple months. Uh, it's been it's been amazing. So thank you. To everybody you guys are just doing a fantastic job this is quite interesting okay thank you jason now mr matthews yes hello everyone i hope everyone is doing well um it's nice to see everyone's faces that we didn't have a board meeting last month so to kind of convene with our fellow colleagues and hear all of the updates and all of the great work that's being done at the schools is really exciting and really humbling to hear. Um, again, I don't think any of us can really capture how, how much gratitude and how thankful we all are for all of the work that our staff are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I know how hard everyone is working and all of the sacrifices that really go into making something like this really possible and i am just so proud to be a part of red clay and a part of all of the success and, and the things that we're doing um, i have received a number of phone calls and a number of communications from the community thanking us for all of the work that we're doing specifically you know some of the more humbling conversations are of parents um, who didn't necessarily know how they were going to make their ends meet in terms of food and food wise and to hear that staff have been able to go out to homes and make sure that you know our children are fed and making sure that they have the essential day to day it just really is something really special um, as a reminder i just wanted to remind everyone to make sure that um, i know with all the work involved and um, in all of this is a lot and just as a reminder for self-care um, to always make sure that you're also taking a moment for yourself and making sure that even though we're in this stressful and very chaotic times, that we're also just taking a moment to breathe and acknowledge um, where we are currently um, so that we're able to, to move forward. Um, another acknowledgement is that it's Assistant Principals Week, and I just wanted to thank all of our assistant principals for all the work that you're doing. Um, and I also wanted to give a little shout out. Since our last board meeting, we've had some really exciting things happen um, in the midst of, of everything going on with COVID. Um, and one thing that I was definitely very excited about um, was Dr. Terrence Newton had an opportunity to go to Hollywood and represent our district on a national platform. And I just wanted to give a special thank you to be able to sit down in my living room and watch, I watched it recorded because it happened during daytime hours, but um, to be able to, to sit down and, and watch uh, Dr. Newton engage, you know, an audience on a national platform was just so humbling. And uh, I am just so proud of, of really um, just fresh insights, new insights, very innovative work. Um, and I, it really was exciting for, I think, not only for our community, but for others and to inspire other people across the country, I think is, is really neat. Um, I know that Darrell um, reminds us, and this is really something to kind of uh, think about and something that resonates is that, you know, we are not only leading education here in the state. I've actually received a number of phone calls from board members um, from Milford and from other districts about what we're doing. Um, Red Clay is, is such a, a model um, for the rest of the state to, to look forward to, but then also nationally speaking. 
Um, so it does go back to, you know, our, our vision of being national leaders and um, leading public education on that platform. Um, so thank you again, Dr. Newton, for your work and for representing us in such a wonderful and exciting way. Um, and again, thank you all for all of your work during this time. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. And then Dr. Bohm, do you want to speak? Yes, I just also wanted to say that I really, really appreciate all the hard work that everyone in this district has done to educate our children and to keep our families fed. And often the people who cook, the people who clean, and the people who transport food are not acknowledged in our thank yous. And I know superintendent acknowledged everyone. I love that he had images of our custodians and people in the PowerPoint he presented. But I did really want to take a moment to acknowledge that from 316 to 327, our custodians worked in our buildings and they came to work and they cleaned when the majority of us were not in our building. I'm a teacher as well. I wasn't in a building at that point. And so I wanted to say thank you very much to our custodians to acknowledge them. And I also know we have a number of custodians who are older than 60. They're 60 plus. And I wanted to especially thank them for coming out. So that was one thing. Um, the second thing I wanted to speak to was Mr. Fackenthal's comments. I heard you loud and clear, Mr. Fackenthal, when you said that miscommunication is an issue and it would be really great having all information come through one source because I know even the day after our children were back in school, I had to send a principal an email and I copied the superintendent on it saying, hey, parents are contacting me because they're receiving different dates for the end of the third marking period and, and they need to know when the real date is for the end of the third marking period. communication that lets people know about some of the activities their students may have um, gotten ready to enroll in. For instance, National Honor Society and Junior National Honor Society. I received emails from parents that those children had applications to submit and then those applications weren't able to be submitted. So that's another item. And then another issue that I wanted to sort of give a little bit of voice to was that I also know that between 316 and 327, some teachers worked really, really hard in attempting to get their platforms up and running and trying to communicate with families and reaching out to students and getting ready for what was a very unpredictable time. So I was one, I know that we submitted a plan to the state about the fact, I know that we have to fulfill, you know, 1,032 hours for seniors, 1,060 hours for K through 12. We have to satisfy 188 calendar days. There's no forgiveness from the state. But what I was interested in is um, a conversation. It does not have to occur tonight, but I wanna go on the record to say that I think there needs to be a conversation about buyback time as an option. So I don't know if the plan we submitted to the state at some point, if that can be revised or updated. But I think that we do have to acknowledge that there was variation in the amount of work that people engaged in during that time, but a lot of our educators and paras did put in lots of hours. So I think that's something we need to talk about as we move forward. And again, I just want to thank everybody for all of the work and people keep sending me messages. So your messages are popping up while I'm talking and that's distracting me. So I just want to say thank you to everyone and keep up the good work. Okay, thank you very much, Adriana. And I had a couple of things to, to talk about as well. Um, just to give a couple of board of um, committee meeting reports, um, Jason and I both on March 4th, which seems like a lifetime ago, attended the Delaware School Board Association Board of Directors meeting in Dover. It really seemed like a lifetime ago because we actually could sit down together and have a meal together and talk about things together. At that time, the National School Board Association meeting that was canceled. Um, and we talked about that because we were going to have our Delaware as usual. That didn't happen. At that time, you know, there is a, the, the lawsuits are going on, the Delawareans for Educational Opportunity versus Carney, that lawsuit. We got an update that the matter had been resolved. We weren't sure how, and we've heard nothing further, so I'm not really sure 
how that matter was addressed or resolved. We hope to hear more. Um, they gave also at the DSBA, they gave a Reading Consortium update with the fact that there were three real scenarios that were being considered and that there was a softening of the April timeframe to July, but of course that was all before the whole coronavirus, so I don't really know what the time frame is. I know that Senator Lockman and the Reading Consortium were going to have a meeting the end of March. That was canceled, so there have been no more Reading Consortium meetings that I'm aware of. Um, so that's kind of in limbo, I think, as well. We got the governor's budget update at that time, but I have a suspicion that that will since be revised further. Um, given everything that's happened since then. And there was a chief's update from, um, because we have a, one of the chiefs is there, about opportunity grants needed a five, we, Delaware's required a five to test out. Neighboring states were lower and now ours is 4.7. People wanted to know the rationale for the school in Wilmington, mostly because the, the state did not go through a certificate of necessity, which is what every school district needs to go through to prove that there is a necessity for the school and for the state to balance out the funds. So there was a lot of concern about not having a CN and how the process worked. Um, there was talk about HB 100, um, the need for more guidance counselors, counselors, social workers, psychologists due to all the mental health needs in the school district. and they commented very favorably on the state board, which is good and really listens. And I thought that was good to hear. So they seem to be very thoughtful, which is very helpful, I think. Um, I also attended, as did most everybody on the call, I believe, the school board workshop on student achievement on March 5th. So we had a workshop where we talked about student achievement. It was a really great discussion. Once again, I learned a lot. We looked at the Delaware Student Success Framework, which seems to be very complex, potentially flawed, really flawed in my opinion, focused predominantly, it seemed like, on proficiency. While there was growth data, it was hidden on a, 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 a subsequent tab. And progressively, it's harder and harder to earn a good rating or earn a higher rating under the DSSF. So that was very interesting to learn about and really problematic in terms of really rating and evaluating our schools on a public forum on the state's website. So um, hopefully some more will come of that. I know we in, the, in Red Clay are talking about coming up with a balanced scorecard where we can really look at more to really evaluate fully how the students are growing. Um, the Office of Curriculum and Instruction was talking about developing the Red Clay Instructional Framework, which is due out in the fall, which sounds like that ought to be good, which all educators will use to teach our students with common language, common expectations, district-wide instructional priorities. And there is developing a portrait of a Red Clay student, which also would be helpful. Um, and then we talked about the four domains of continuous improvement, which are being worked on leadership, instruction, school climate, culture, and culture and multi-tiered systems. Um, I mentioned in the balanced scorecard. Last night, we had the Community Financial Review Committee, um, and that was uh, another good discussion, led, of course, by Jill, our CFO. The district is in as good a place financially as we can be at this time. Revenues and expenses are in line with prior years, so our revenues are, are at 92, and our expenses at 75%. They're in line with prior years, so we're doing well. We are notating all the expenses related to COVID-19, so we, we will know what we spent in prior years and we can use that in terms of applying for any available stimulus, as well as reporting kind of the needs that we have. Um, finances, probably nationally as well as statewide, given where we are, are nobody really knows what's going on, not surprisingly, given where we are. Everyone expects that governor's, Governor Carney's recommended budget will be revised. And it's a very difficult time period because typically the legislature and the JFC would be meeting right now and having budget discussions, which we could have input into. But of course, none of that is happening. So everything is somewhat delayed. So what's going to happen is somewhat uncertain. Um, and I will give a huge kudo um, to Red Clay because we, as well as the state, have been able to keep everyone on the payroll 
And I think that's phenomenal at this point in time. So kudos there too. I also attended meal distribution the first two days and was mightily impressed. My first day I was at Vaults and I was shocked because within the first five minutes, the meals had already been distributed. And so they had to call for more. So there was a great distribution system, but the need was great even from the very beginning. And then at Warner and Shortledge the next day. So again, thank you very much to the district. I also want to thank the district. The new newsletter was very good and I thought it was a, a really great attempt. So thank you very to communicate and communication is key. And I think our website, I go on it all the time. So it's very helpful in terms of getting information. So thank you very much. And once again, thank you to everyone in the district for all your hard work. I think it's very clear that everybody on the board sees it, hears it, knows about it and appreciates it tremendously. So thank you very much. Anybody else? Because if not, I will ask if there are information items to, for us to look at for next meeting. And otherwise I will accept a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? This one we probably don't need a roll call on, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay safe, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe and thank you all very much. Good night. Take care. Great job, Tony and Maria. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. That was a good night. Thank you.